What's up guys and welcome to yet another Drone X video. I noticed a lot of you guys liked my old H8FV mod video. I know I did. That mod is just super awesome and it's really fun to fly the H8 in FPV. The H8 is just such a good platform for, F for FPV because its spare parts are super cheap, you can get the batteries really cheap and it's just a really nice and durable lightweight frame. So today I thought we would take it a step further. One of the most annoying things with the original H8 is the controller. Now the controller really sucks. It's really hard to get precise movement and the yaw axis turns extremely fast right off the bat. Making it extremely hard to make smooth turns. And another problem is the fact that you can't actually customize the firmware. You can't fly in rate mode and you can't change your rates. So in this video we're gonna change all of that and make the ultimate H8. So to make this mod you'll need all the things I have here in front of me. That's a frame of course, it's a flight controller, it's a camera and VTX combo, a receiver and a couple of motors. If you own a H8 already then you'll already have the frame and the motors. Now if you don't I would recommend buying the frame separately and then buying another brand of motors, like the Sheoli motors or the Raystars. Now you could also get some insanely fast motors, like the Micromotor Warehouse Black Edition motors. Although I wouldn't really recommend them as they tend to puff the stock H8 battery. So then you also need to upgrade the battery. So let's take a look at the flight controller. So when looking at a flight controller I would really recommend the one I chose, it's really affordable and super tiny. However, if you can find a flight controller with a built-in receiver for your transmitter, then I would of course use that one. Also, you could look for a flight controller with a built-in OSD, although it would be a bit of a hassle connecting up with the VTX combo, but fully doable. So I start off by cutting out a piece of the adhesive tape that comes with the flight controller and then attaching the flight controller to the bottom piece of the frame. I make sure to align the USB port on the back side so it can be easily accessible in later stages. Then I just cut the chassis to fit the USB port. Then you can go ahead and solder on the included battery connector. Make sure to pre-tin the wire and the pad first. Then it's time to take a look at the receiver. Now almost every transmitter have one of these micro receivers, so just get the one that's compatible with your transmitter. To make it even smaller I decided to remove the heat shrink. I also cut away the connector to save space, as the receiver I have have different pads that are connected to the same connector pins. Once I'm done, the receiver is a lot smaller and looks something like this. You can see the S bus pin as well as the 5 volt and the ground. If you don't feel confident soldering these small pads, you could always just use the connector and it will probably fit just fine. I wire the ground to the ground on the flight controller, the 5 volt to the 5 volts on the flight controller, and then the ESPA signal to RX3. You can connect the ESPA to any RX input, but the number 3 were in the best location. If you want more information on this, just check out the video I made about connecting your receiver to the flight controller. I'll have a card right here. The receiver should now fit pretty neatly here in the front, and it will later be held down by the front cover. At this point you should make sure that your receiver is working. I just make sure to check for short circuits before plugging in the battery. The receiver powers on and everything seems to be working correctly. I then connect the VTX combo ground to a ground and the voltage in to a 5V output on the flight controller. When connecting the battery you should now see the VTX powering on. I then attach the camera using some more adhesive. Then simply connect the four motors on the different motor outputs. Remember that the motors are separated in clockwise and counterclockwise versions. The one with the red and blue wires should be in the top left corner and bottom right corner. If you're using the motors from an old H8, you will need to extend the wires, which can be a bit of a hassle. So if you don't feel up to the task, just buy one of the motors I recommended in the beginning of this video. If you want to take this build a step further, you could also add some LEDs on the 3.3V output. 
featuring the antenna and drill a hole in the front cover to route the antenna through. Also, cut the front cover in half at the camera. Then it's just a matter of screwing the frame back together. Then I just go ahead and cut a hole in the back piece to fit the camera through. Attach the propellers and add a bit of glue at the antenna and you are done with the build step of this quad. To get everything set up in beta flight just go to the firmware flasher, flash the latest firmware that your flight controller runs. The one I used run the SB Racing EVO firmware. Connect to your flight controller and make sure that your ESCs are running in brushed mode. Choose serial based receiver and then select SBUS in the receiver type. Go into the ports tab and turn on serial RX for UART3. Now you should be able to see all of your stick movements in the receiver tab. Last but not least go into the modes tab and configure a arm switch and a angle switch. Now if you want more information on the beta flight configuration check out my full video, I have a card here. And that's it guys, your H8 is ready to fly and I must say it really flies super well. It's super smooth and it's really nice to be able to change your rates and flight modes. I would definitely recommend this mod and it's just a super fun indoor flyer. The spare parts are cheap and the props are a lot more efficient than a standard tiny whoop. And using a full size transmitter really makes all of the difference in the world. So that's it for this time and if you liked the video please check out some of our other videos and please consider subscribing, it does help a lot. In the meantime I'll see you in the next one.